Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this frame using stiffness matrix method. Before analyzing, let us see the frame one time. In this frame, there are two columns, column AB and column CD. Also, there is a beam BC. In the point B, there is a nodal point load 20 kN. This load is acting towards the right side. The height of the columns is 4 meter. Length of the beam is also 4 meter. The flexural rigidity EA is given as constant for all of the members. This frame is a sway type frame. Because of this nodal load, there will be sway. The sway will be occurring in the direction of this load. So the sway occurs towards the right side. Now let us find the fixed end moments. Except this nodal load, there are no loads in the columns and beam. So all of the fixed end moments will be zero. Now let us find the kinematic indeterminacy of the frame. In this frame, in the joint B, there will be slope theta B. In the joint C also, there will be slope theta C. We know that this frame is subjected to sway. It sways towards the right side. So, totally the kinematic indeterminacy is equal to 3. They are the slope theta b, slope theta c and the sway delta. Now, let us make the fully restrained structure. For that, we have to apply fixed supports in the points B and C. Now, let us make the coordinates diagram. The first coordinate is in the point B because in the point B, we have the slope. The second coordinate is in the point C because in the point C also, we have the slope. The third coordinate is the sway. Since the sway occurs towards the right side, let us keep the coordinate towards the right side. Let us see the formula to find the displacements. Delta matrix is equal to K matrix inverse into P matrix minus PL matrix. Inside the delta matrix, we will have the slope values theta b and theta c, also the sway delta. In this formula, now let us find the p matrix. Our first two coordinates are in the points b and c. So, to find p1 and p2, we have to check the points b and c. If there are any movements in the points B and C, there are no movements. So P1 and P2 will be 0. The third coordinate is the sway. To find P3, we have to check the points B and C. If there are any horizontal loads in the point C, there is no horizontal load, but in the point B, we have a horizontal load, 20 kN. It is acting in the coordinate direction. Our coordinate is acting in the right side. This load also acting towards the right side. So, we have to apply this value as positive. Now, in this formula, let us find PL matrix. Our first coordinate is in the point B. In the point B, there are two fixed end movements, M of BA and M of BC. We have to add both of them. Both of them are zero. 
0 plus 0, we will get 0. Our second coordinate is in the point C. In the point C, there are two fixed end moments, M of CB and M of CD. We have to add both of them. Both of them are 0. 0 plus 0, we will get 0. The third coordinate is the survey. To find P3L, we have to add the horizontal reactions in the points B and C due to the loads. In this frame, except this load, there are no loads. So, HB and HC will be 0. 0 plus 0, we will get 0. Now, we are going to find the stiffness matrix. In the stiffness matrix, first let us find these four elements. To find them, we have to apply unit displacement in the first two coordinates. Then, we have to use the formulas. If the fair end is fixed, the formula is 4EA upon L. If the fair end is hinged, the formula is 2EA upon L. Let us apply unit displacement in the first coordinate and find these two values. In the point B, there was a fixed support. But when we apply unit displacement, let us assume that it becomes a hinged support. Let us see how to draw these curves. We are applying unit displacement in the point B. From the point B, make two clockwise curves, one curve towards the point C and one curve towards the point A. And then see the direction of the arrows and draw the curves. Now let us find K11. For that, from the point B, we have to look other ends. In the end A, there is a fixed support. If the fair end is fixed, the formula for the stiffness is 4EA upon L. Length of BA is 4. Let us apply that. Now let us look other end C. In the end C also, there is a fixed support. So we have to apply the same formula 4EA upon L. Length of BC is 4. Let us apply that. For K11, we have to add these two values. After adding, we are getting this. Now, let us find K12. For that, from the point C, we have to look other ends. No need to look the end D. Because for the column CD, there is no curve. So, we have to look only the end B. In the end B, there is a hinged support. If the fair end is hinged, the formula for the stiffness is 2EI upon L. Length of CB is 4. Let us apply that. Finally, for K12, we are getting 0.5EI. Now, let us apply unit displacement in the second coordinate and find K21 and K22. Our second coordinate is in the point C. So, we have to apply unit displacement in the point C. In the point C, there was a fixed support. But when we apply unit displacement, we can assume that it becomes a hinged support. Let us see how to draw these curves. We are applying unit displacement in the point C. So, from the point C, make two clockwise curves, one curve towards the point B and one curve towards the point D. Then, we have to see the direction of the arrows and draw these curves. Let us find K21. For that, from the point B, we have to look other ends. No need to look at the end A. Because for the column BA, there is no curve. Let us look the other end C. In the point C, 
there is a hinged support. If the fair end is hinged, the formula is 2EA upon L. Length of BC is 4. Finally, for K21, we are getting 0.5EI. Now, let us find K22. For that, from the point C, we have to look other ends. In the end B, there is a fixed support. In the other end, D also, there is a fixed support. If the fair end is fixed, the formula is 4EI upon L. Length of CB is 4. Length of CD is also 4. Let us apply them. Finally, for K22, we are getting 2EI. In the stiffness matrix, we have found these four values. Now, we are going to find the third row. To find the third row, we have to apply unit displacement in the third coordinate. Our third coordinate is the sway acting towards the right side. So, we have to apply unit displacement towards the right side. You can see that I have applied unit displacement in the coordinate direction. To find K31, we have to find the moment in the point B. The moment developed due to sway is 6EI delta upon L square. Since the sway occurs towards the right side, the moment developed due to sway will be negative. In this formula, let us apply the values. Delta is 1. Length of the column AB is 4. Let us apply that. Finally, for K31, we are getting minus 0.375 EI. The values of K31 and K13 will be same. Now, let us find K32. For that, we have to find the moment in the point C. In this formula, let us apply the values. Delta is 1. Length of CD is 4. Let us apply them. Finally, for K32, we are getting minus 0.375 EI. The values of K32 and K23 will be same. Now, let us find K33. For that, we have to add the horizontal reactions in the point B and in the point C. The formula to find the horizontal reaction due to sway is 12 EA delta upon L cube. In this formula, let us apply the values. The value of delta is 1. Length of BA is 4. Length of CD is also 4. After the calculation, we will get these. Then, we have to add these two values. After adding, we are getting 0.375 EI. Both of these reactions will be acting towards the right side. Our coordinate is also acting towards the right side. So, both of these reactions will be positive. In this case, for K33, we are getting a positive value. In the stiffness matrix, we have calculated all of the values. Let us apply them. EI is constant. Let us keep it outside. In this formula, we have found everything. Let us apply them. EI inverse is 1 upon EI. For this matrix, we have to find the inverse. We can apply all of the values in the calculator and get the inverse. If you do not know how to find inverse in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. I have used the calculator and got the inverse. We can add these two matrices. After adding, we are getting these. Then, we can multiply these two matrices. After multiplying, we are getting theta b, theta c and delta. 
Now let us make the slope deflection equations and apply these three values and get the final moments. First, let us make the slope deflection equations in the column AB. The column AB is subjected to survey. So, in the slope deflection equations, we have to add the moments due to survey. Since the survey occurs towards the right side, these moments will be negative. In the equations, let us apply the fixed end moments, which are 0. Length of AB is 4. Let us apply that. In the point A, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. So, theta A will be 0. After applying the values of theta B and delta, we are getting MAB and MBA. Now, let us make the slope deflection equations in the beam BC. Let us apply the fixed end moments which are 0. Length of BC is 4. Let us apply that. After applying the values of theta B and theta C, we are getting MBC and MCB. Now, let us make the slope deflection equations in the column CD. Since the column CD is subjected to survey, in the equations, we have to add the moments due to survey. Let us apply the fixed end moments which are 0. Length of CD is 4. Let us apply that. In the point D, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. So, theta D will be 0. After applying the values of theta C and delta, we are getting MCD and MDC. Let us see the direction of the moments. For MAP, we got a negative value. That means it is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. For MBA, we got a negative value. So it is also acting in the anti-clockwise direction. For MBC, we got positive value. That means it is acting in the clockwise direction. For MCB also, we got positive value. That means it is also acting in the clockwise direction. For MCD, we got negative value. That means it is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. Finally, for MDC also, we got a negative value. That means it is also acting in the anti-clockwise direction. Now, we are going to find the reactions. First, let us take the column AB and find the reactions. By taking moment about B, we can find HA. By applying the rule, sigma H is equal to 0, we can find HB. Now, let us find the reactions in the beam BC. By taking moment about C, we can find VB. For VB, we got a negative value. That means our assumed direction is incorrect. Actually, VB is acting downwards. Then, we can apply the rule sigma V is equal to 0 and find VC. Now, let us find the reactions in the column CD. By taking moment about D, we can find HC. After applying this rule, we can find HD. Using the loads and reactions, we can draw the shear force diagram. Then, using the direction of the moments, we can make the bending moment diagram. In this analysis, there will be no free moment diagram because in the columns and beam, there are no member loads. So, we can directly draw the bending moment diagram. Now, we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.